Mr. Controller, thanks for joining us, if remotely. Great to be with you again, Karen. I wanted to talk to you about a couple of reports you've done lately on the state's finances, and I think it's no surprise that it's not good at all. Now, you and I have been here a little while. We've seen our share of economic turndown, state fiscal crises, but this, this is worse than anything we've ever seen, right? It, it's, it's a deep turndown, and I think what's so different, Karen, is that it happened so fast. And of course, the timing from a state perspective uh, is that it all hit in mid-March, the beginnings of it, right at the time that the state budget was being finalized. So it meant we had to put together, uh, legislature and the governor to put together a budget that had a lot of assumptions and asterisks and placeholders dependent upon uh, how the revenues would come in. And as we've seen, certainly with the, you know, with the April numbers, what we put out with our what's called the May cash report, which is based on the April figures, a steep drop in revenues year over year, certainly missing the mark for what had been projected in the state budget to avoid triggering possible uh, state budget cuts. So we're all waiting to see how that how that plays as we move forward. Well, that's right, because the governor and his budget director say that they're going to have to do eight billion dollars in cuts to schools, local governments, health care if the federal government doesn't step in and do this fourth federal bailout, what do you think are the chances of that federal bailout happening? And is it really, well, really necessary? It is absolutely necessary. Uh, and we should also point out a possibility for 1.6 billion in cuts to state agencies as well. So it's an impact, as you point out, at, at the local level, which really just transfers our budget problems to another level of government. Again, local government being on uh, the front lines of dealing with with the crisis of the pandemic so that's not really an effective solution to balance the state's books on the backs of our of our local government partners and state agencies many of which have already been uh, operating you know with staff levels uh, you know, very th very thin staff levels compared to uh, numbers in the past so it really underscores the importance of that federal aid to come in the form of unrestricted aid for all states, not just New York, but certainly given everything New York's been dealing with, uh, to plug that budget hole so we don't pass our problem on to the local level, and so the state continue, can continue to respond to the pandemic crisis. But we also need that federal aid to our local governments as well, to our cities, our towns, our villages, because that's where the front line is in dealing with this issue in, in local communities. The other options are cuts, as we just talked about, borrowing and the budget also provides uh, extraordinary authority beyond the usual limits for there to be additional borrowing uh, certainly as we are in the month april may june this quarter we have some significant payouts particularly with school aid there may be a need there probably will be the financial plan anticipates about four and a half billion in short-term borrowing for cash flow we certainly don't want to get in a situation where we're doing long-term deficit financing because that will just set us back you know, for years to come. Uh, you know, the only other option that some people talk about is raising taxes. I'm not sure there's much of an appetite for that right now, given the damage to the economy, although obviously people are talking about it, and we'll leave that to the legislature and the governor to sort that out. To me, Karen, it gets back to urgent. We need that federal assistance, and we need it as soon as possible. Right, because we've seen how long-term borrowing can definitely get the state into trouble. But analyzing the state finances isn't the only thing you do. Your office also has auditing powers. However, some of those auditing powers have been curtailed recently by Governor Cuomo when it relates to the contracts for COVID-19 related purchases. And some of them are big purchases or contracts. Like there's a big contract with Google to help the state's unemployment insurance system function better. And there was also a $69 million uh, contract with a ventilator company in California that turned out to be phony. No ventilators materialized. Now I should say the state did get some of the money back, but it didn't, doesn't in retrospect seem like a great decision. Does that concern you that you weren't able to look at those contracts before they went out? Well, you know, th this discussion, you know, certainly predates uh, the current crisis. Uh, and I certainly understand in the midst of a crisis, uh, some of the emergency powers that were given to the executive uh, make some sense. But I've always been of the opinion that we operate very efficiently and fast here. 
and having that other level of review, I think, is helpful to protect taxpayer interests and making sure the money is being spent uh, appropriately. So we're still on the payment side of things. So we, I think we've approved about $733 million worth of, of emergency payments. And, and we've been working very closely with the governor and his team, certainly early on for ventilators and personal protective equipment, trying to work as quick as possible, working with Department of Labor to get those unemployment benefits paid out because, you know, that, that's been an issue and a concern. But, but probably no surprise, there are people that have tried to take advantage of the situation. In fact, you know, just this week we announced uh, uh, as part of a joint investigation we were involved with with the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District, uh, an individual has been arrested for allegedly trying to present himself as someone who, you know, on behalf of the government, uh, was out there marketing ventilators, and it was all bogus, and basically he was just trying to line his own pockets. That was an example of where the U.S. Attorney's Office reached out to our staff, our investigative staff, and said, can you help us? We think we've got a possible fraud here. Uh, and, and so, you know, that's what the Controller's Office is equipped to do. So I hope moving forward, that kind of responsibility will be reinstated for us to be part of the process of of vetting and accountability. So you think if you had those pre-audit powers, um, would any mistakes been averted looking back at what happened now? You know, it's, it's always hard, Karen, to answer something like that because who knows? I mean, one, one would think that, one would hope that we, we could have been helpful in that regard. But again, you know, in the face uh, of, the, of the real crisis at the beginning where there was a real uh, concern that we weren't gonna have adequate uh, supplies in terms of ventilators and masks and gowns and so on. It really was crisis mode. You know, probably no surprise that, that, that maybe, you know, uh, on, in hindsight, you know, some of those purchases, you know, perhaps could have been more, uh, even if they were valid, uh, could have been at a better price. But, you know, thank God we're in a point where, you know, we're, we're past the real crisis moment. So, you know, let's, let's just all take a deep breath and make sure that we're looking out for the taxpayer interest moving forward. That's right. June 6th, the current executive order that the governor has expires. So you would expect to get your auditing powers back at that point. Well, as I said, some of this discussion predates the pandemic well, crisis. Yes, we don't have enough time in this interview to get into all yeah. of that, but they were so, suspended so, for several yeah. years and it right, led to right. corruption scandals, to put it. Right. So we'll, we'll, it we'll, right. we'll see what happens. Uh, you know, we, we are a ready uh, partner to, to work with uh, the governor's office and making sure taxpayers are protected in New York. All right, well, we'll have to leave it there. Thanks very much for your time and nice to see you. Look forward to being in person again one day.